Hi, I'm Steve Kruger down here in my studio, and today I'm going to be demonstrating a unique technique which I've been uh, which I've been doing for probably 25 years using these two products: spray Mod Podge and Liquid Mod Podge. I'm going to demonstrate how to mount your painting onto a hard canvas board and to preserve it with the spray Mod Podge. This is the way I like to uh, display most of my uh, watercolor artwork. As you can see, no mat, no glass, no reflection. And uh, that's what these two products will allow you to do. So, it's going to be fun. Let's begin. All right, as I mentioned in my cover video, Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use Mod Podge to mount your watercolor painting to a hard canvas board, such as this. Now that's going to be fun to, uh, to demonstrate, but before I start on that, I wanted to let you know how I got into using Mod Podge. But, uh, this painting, uh, this is a, uh, a print, but um, about 20, 25 years ago I did this. And uh, I had a customer, she had uh, put it in a frame with a mat and with glass. And she came to me and said, you know, it would be great if I could just take this off the wall and show my son, he was I think four or five years old, show my son this painting without glass and without a mat, where he could actually touch it, he could uh, look at it, um, uh, she could put it in his hands and uh, without fear of the glass breaking, anything like that. So that got me interested and um, I think this is one of my first children themed um, artwork that I mounted. Let me show you this. I mounted it on this board. It's an 11 by 14 using Mod Podge. And I sprayed and covered the, uh, the front with uh, liquid Mod Podge. Let me show you this. It brightens it up. Uh, it makes all these little jelly beans pop. So I had a lot of interest in this. And the nice thing about covering your painting with Mod Podge, you could spill a cup of coffee on this or, or little Tommy could drool on it and you could wipe everything off. It's, uh, it's like a varnish. Mod Podge is, is really nice. A lot of people say, well, does it dull it? This is 20, maybe 23 years old. And as far as I can see, it's just exactly the same. Mod Podge does not dull it. And uh, it's, it's something, um, it's, it's fun to, uh, to finish your painting off and to mount it on something, a hard board that'll fit into a frame. So this, all you have to do is frame it, hang it on the wall, no mat, no glass. And here's another, here's uh, a smaller painting. Now this, let's face it, if you walk up to this, some people would say, well, even I would have to look close and say, is this a watercolor? Um, is it oil? What is it? Because it's being displayed without glass or mat. So that's what I like uh, about using Mod Podge. And uh, it keeps things bright. And it is a very nice finish. You can use gloss Mod Podge, matte Mod Podge. There's different types. So I'll be demonstrating that and I'll be back. Here's the abstract painting that I did several weeks ago. And as I mentioned, I'm going to uh, spray this with Mod Podge and cover it with liquid Mod Podge and then mount it to this uh, board. That's what I'm going to demonstrate. Before I do that, take a look. This is before I've sprayed any Mod Podge on. And this is blue and red right out of the tube. If I ran a wet brush over that, it would diffuse and turn into a purple. 
So I'm going to lock this color in so that I can put liquid Mod Podge over. Here's what I'm going to do. To start with, I'm going to uh, spray this with Mod Podge Gloss. This will really make it pop. I wanted you to see it first without the spray. So I'm going to spray this once. Let it dry for 20 minutes, half an hour. Spray it again. Let it dry. Spray it one more time. Let it dry. And when it's bone dry, then I'm going to apply liquid Mod Podge. And I can even put brush strokes on if I apply it heavy enough. So that's what I'm going to do. And here we go. All right, here's the painting I'm going to uh, mount on a hard canvas board. But before I do that, we have to put some... Uh, some Mod Podge on it. This is like a varnish that you would do with an, you wouldn't use this for an oil painting, but this is similar. Um, you want to lock all these colors in using Mod Podge. So I'll pour a little bit in a bowl. Let's get that over here. Okay, that looks like about the right, right amount. Now, this is bone dry. I've uh, sprayed it three times. Let's get the... Uh, sprayed it three times with uh, Mod Podge Gloss with a half hour to 45 minute dry time between all three sprays. This is bone dry. So the spray locks it in. I can run Mod Podge over this uh, watercolor that came right out of the tube. Let me get that up here. See, we've got a little bit of shine from that uh, spray, the Mod Podge spray. So, here we go. I'm putting it on rather thick so I can show brush strokes. That way, when somebody comes up, they'll say, hey, is this, uh, is this an oil painting? I see brush strokes. Notice I'm going right over this watercolor paint that came right out of the tube, and I put it on with a uh, trowel. And you just cover the whole painting, of course. I always put something under it. I've got a white, large piece of paper under here, which I'm going to throw away when we're finished. Let me get down here. Now, sometimes I sign my, my abstract, sometimes I don't, because if a person buys this, maybe they want the abstract, maybe they want to hang it uh, the other way, maybe they want to hang it vertically. So on this one, I'm just going to sign it on the back, on the back of the hard canvas board. Okay. Notice no paint came up on the Mod Podge. I mean, uh, um, no paint came up from the Mod Podge onto the brush. So let's get this up here. See, we're getting a nice shine. This is going to really pop. And I'll throw this piece of paper away. Now we've got some brush strokes. That gives it a good look. Okay. Let's see, right here is pretty thick. We'll lower that a little bit. All right. So, 
just one coat you don't need two I'm just doing one coat and I used a little bit too much I'm gonna throw this away you can't reuse this in another hour this will be hard um, be sure and clean your brush with hot water okay I'll be back showing you the finished product all right the painting is now ready to mount we sprayed it with Mod Podge three times, half hour between spray times. And we're going to now use liquid Mod Podge, pour it into a bowl. And we're going to brush it onto the back of the painting and to the front of the hard canvas board. So I'll get everything ready for that and I'll be right back. All right, here's the painting, and we're going to apply the Mod Podge. Now this, you want to have a damp cloth, and uh, I'll demonstrate why later on as we go. So here we go. With the Mod Podge, not too thick, uh, because then you might leave bubbles but I'll show you how to work around that. Okay, we're getting this. Be sure to get the edges. All right. Getting rid of this paper. Now we apply the Mod Podge the front of the board. This is the hard canvas board. Making sure you get all the edges. As you can see, this is messy. That's why I put it on a piece of paper that I can discard. Okay, now we apply, making sure that it fits properly. Okay, that's looking good. We wipe the sides in case any spilled through or came up from around the edges. Now we lay some paper on it. And we lay a board on top, like so. And where's that big bad boy? This, <clears throat> this is a big piece of cement stone. Put it right on here and let it sit. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and this has only been, oh, probably five minutes that this has been on this board, letting this set. So I could walk away from this, but I always like to double check. So I take this off, take the board and the paper off, And I take this, I always put paper over this. Uh, shoot, I forget what this is called. Um, anyhow. This is to get rid of all the bubbles. Now this only had set for about five minutes. And now I'm doing this real hard, especially around the sides. The reason I have the paper in case I don't want anything to get on this. So I 
to get onto my painting. So I always put the paper over and then use use this. Um, I'll think of the name of it after I've finished with this video. Okay. So no bubbles. It's flat. It's been set up for five minutes. Put the paper over it. Let's make sure that was... Yeah, okay, put the paper over it. And we'll put this block on. Now, now I'm gonna walk away. I, I might come back in a half an hour um, just to make sure everything looks okay. But at this stage, after I've used this to really um, get rid of all the bubbles, if there were any bubbles, um, I'd probably just walk away from this and come back in maybe two, three hours. Now for a bigger piece, you can use a rolling pin. Um, and this, uh, this really gets, gets it set and gets it uh, uh, attached to the surface of the hard canvas board. So there we go. I'll be back in, oh, probably an hour or so. We'll check, and I'll show you the end product. Okay, I'm back. It's been about two and a half hours with this uh, heavy cement uh, block on the painting. And here it is. It is now permanently affixed to the uh, hard canvas board. And it is ready for framing. No mat, no glass. So hopefully that's been of interest to you. Uh, I've got a few tips I wanted to impart. Whatever you do when you try this technique, don't do it on a finished uh, piece of artwork. Do this on scrap pieces of paper, um, practice. Always remember this, I finally got the name of this. This is a brayer. Always use the brayer and uh, just follow my instructions. Now the one thing, I kind of cheated. I used a masonite board that bends a little bit. Um, you can use something like this. It's small on a small piece, uh, small piece of artwork like this. But if you're going to use a big piece of artwork um, and mount it to a uh, a large canvas uh, hardboard, you have to use a, a piece of wood that won't bend. I have a a big piece of wood uh, that came from my countertop from my old house. It's almost an inch thick. So you have to use that and you have to, uh, rather than just using one cement block, um, you know, get other heavy blocks and put on your big piece because you, you just don't want to have one little block on a big piece of um, canvas board that you're mounting. You, you might want to distribute some heavy pieces of blocks on it. So that's a tip. Um, Another thing, got several things I want to show before we leave. Here's another abstract I did. This is called dry mount. Um, I, uh, I painted this with ink before I put this on, uh, painted the panel, and then dry mounted this. In other words, you, uh, you spray this and uh, then go ahead and follow my instructions on placing this on the uh, hard canvas. So, so you can get a, uh, if you wanted a matte look, this is one idea you could use. Here's another. Uh, this is, of course, a winter scene that I did. And uh, when I painted this, I put tape around here, painted my image in here, and then pulled the tape up and uh, mounted it on 
on a canvas panel. So you can get a matte look if, if you want and not use glass. So this is another technique. Um, and this of course fits right in the frame such as this. Now, another technique I don't want to leave until I've uh, explained a lot of things to you that that will help you in the future. This is a painting I did and uh, I didn't want to use glass and I didn't want to use a mat but I wanted the whole picture to show once I put it in the frame so I left I left a little bit of white around here so that when I put it in the frame the whole picture is displayed rather than uh, you know this these end pieces cutting into your your picture if you understand what I what I mean so this is a good look also. So I think I've given you all the tips. Oh, one other thing. I've been playing around with UPO and um, in the future, I'm gonna be teaching uh, uh, UPO, but look at this. I sprayed it and then I put liquid gloss. You got brush strokes there, you got shiny, I mean, this really pops. So with UPO, sometimes if you run something wet across it, if you haven't locked the color in, it just smears. So this locks the color in on this piece of UPO. You can spill a cup of coffee on this and not damage it. And um, I think that does it. So everybody have a wonderful day.